Number 5. Panasonic Lumix G7 the Panasonic G7 has a slim, handsome-looking body with sharp angles that's available in two versions, black or silver finished color edition, and even though we're currently reviewing the silver colored version, feel free to switch because you simply can't go wrong. A 3-inch 1040K dot very angle touchscreen sits under the viewfinder and outputs a decent level of brightness, and it's very responsive as well, which will add a lot to your user experience because all of your gestures are going to be registered perfectly. When it comes to the performance, the Lumix G7 is armed with a Venus Engine 9 image processor, a 16 megapixel CMOS sensor, has a continuous shooting rate of 7 FPS, 49 point AF, and an ISO sensitivity level that ranges from 100 to 25,600. Moving on, if you want to try yourself shooting raw format images, keep in mind that since at this stage the in-camera noise reduction is disabled, details do significantly look better in comparison to JPEGs, and this pattern continues up to ISO 6400. Starting from ISO 12800 to 25600, noise starts to get rougher, but still the results aren't as bad as is the case with JPEG format imagery. The footage looks crisp and sharp, whereas the color accuracy is excellent as well, and I can easily say that as you're growing as a photographer by capturing photos, you shouldn't hesitate to start recording videos and get better at that aspect as well. Number 4. Panasonic Lumix G85 The Panasonic G85 is Panasonic's latest DSLR-style mid-range mirrorless camera, and it offers numerous high-end features, borrowing quite a few from the earlier GH4 flagship model. The G85 gains some notable upgrades, particularly regarding the camera body and 4K video, yet without abandoning the mid-range price point of its predecessor. We were very impressed by its overall performance and capabilities during our lab and real-world testing. One thing that does affect both the viewfinder and LCD screen, however, are minor artifacts when shooting video, regardless of resolution. These don't appear in recorded footage, but they're particularly visible when capturing detailed subjects and those with defined edges. Full HD footage is a little softer by comparison, so it's best to record 4K footage if memory card space permits, as this appears much crisper when viewed on a non-4K display. The image stabilization system has a noticeable effect on smoothness too. The Panasonic Lumix G85 may not be the most radical upgrade we've seen in recent times, but there's still an awful lot to like about it. Number 3. Sony Alpha A6600 Next up we have the Sony A6600. This one has the world's fastest AF at 0.02 seconds with real-time AF and object tracking. It's the best and has many great features that any vlogger would love. The 24.2 megapixel APS-C Exmor sensor provides brilliant qualities and amazing features. In my opinion, it's best when compared to much pricier full-frame cameras. The A6600 provides amazing video quality, sharp and clear images that anyone would love, and if you want to get nice high contrast scenes, you should set the dynamic range optimization to normal and the results will be astonishing. It has a small body and this means there's a limited room for external controls. The record button is a bit hard to reach because it sits on a slanted side edge, however these are minor details and I should mention that you can shoot amazing videos no matter what. I should also mention that the 5-axis in-body optical image stabilization mechanism has been adapted as the stabilization unit for the APS-C sensor on the A6600 and the results that this camera gives are just brilliant. If you want one of the best cameras for YouTube and stuff like that, you should definitely consider taking a look at the A6600 and see if this is the camera you were looking for. Number 2. Fujifilm X-T4 The Fujifilm X-T4 is the company's latest high-end photo and video APS-C mirrorless camera. It brings in-body stabilization, faster shooting, improved autofocus and a larger battery to the already very capable X-T3. Fujifilm says that the X-T4 is a sister model to the X-T3 rather than a replacement, which is borne out by the specs and pricing. It's a 26 megapixel camera capable of 20 FPS shooting and 4K capture at up to 60p. In use, we found it offers distinct benefits over both the X-T3 and the older X-H1, and although the autofocus performance isn't cutting edge, it offers one of the best stills and video options you can buy. As with previous Fujifilm cameras, the main menu is pretty well laid out, with icons down the left-hand side that break most of the options into logical sections. For the most part, the X-T 4s video capture options match those of the X-T 3, giving you some really high-end capture options and excellent image quality. 
On this camera, you can gain the option to record the more web-friendly AAC audio in the camera's 8-bit 8.264 modes rather than linear PCM. 4K video can be captured for up to around 30 minutes or 20 minutes for 50 and 60p shooting. It's a really good stills camera. It's a really, really good video camera. But the thing it excels at is switching back and forth between being both. Number 1. Sony a7 III Since the introduction of the a7 series, Sony has been the leader in the full-frame mirrorless market with its excellent models year after year. While the a7 III is the basic model in the a7 lineup compared to the a7 R3 and the a7S III, it's one of the most capable cameras in the market, delivering amazing value for its price. The predecessor of the a7 III was excellent and it was considered the pinnacle, however Sony never ceases to amaze. Speaking about controls, it has the same layout as the high-end a7R III, giving you amazing creative freedom, but this is a double-edged sword since beginners will have to undertake a learning curve. On the rear of the device, there's the multi-selector joystick for precise work, however you have the 3-inch 921K dot variangle LCD touchscreen display as well, which is pretty sharp, responsive and useful. The Sony a7 III is equipped with a 24.2 megapixel BSI CMOS full-frame sensor that does a perfect job at shooting amazing photographs with beautiful colors, sharpness, white retention and overall naturality. This is the most fun camera to shoot with. The ISO range spans from 100 to 51,200, but can be expanded from 50 to 204,800, and even in high ISO levels it performed excellently, keeping the noise levels low. It can shoot amazing 4K footage in both 24 and 30 frames per second, and are oversampled forms of 6K and 5K video, and combined with its autofocus experience, this camera is one of the best all-rounders in the market. Buying Guide Firstly, Usage this is a big question, and since it's hard to constrain this down to just a few popular uses, we want to at least keep in your awareness what you think you'll be using your video camera under $500 for. Some frequent uses we've seen around and their answers include filming sports, grab a good AF system, especially if the sport involves a lot of movement, filming music videos, if outdoors, check for low light sensitivity, YouTube videos, any will do, especially if you're vlogging, and more. Secondly, resolution. The resolution indicates how many pixels are in the footage, with more pixels offering greater clarity and detail. Where just a few years ago the decision was between standard definition and high definition, the question is now high definition or 4K. 4K resolution means the longest side has about 4000 pixels, and that's nearly four times the resolution of HD. Most HD cameras have a 1080p resolution, though there's a few that still use the lower quality 720p. And thirdly, sensor. For best results, the sensor resolution must be at least twice the video standard's resolution. That is to say, for a 720p camcorder, the sensor resolution should be at least 1.8 megapixels. For 1080 IP, it should be at least 4 megapixels, and the same goes for each chip in the 3-chip model. Higher resolutions will most likely not improve the video, however they may give higher still photo quality. When it comes to the types of sensors, most camcorders employ CMOS sensors. The latest development in CMOS being BSI technology, backside illuminated, which tend to give better results in low-light situations.